Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are going to be returning to Unity of Command 2 Barbarossa, a new DLC out uh, by the folks who made Unity of Command 2, uh, as you would guess. It's the second DLC pack for Unity of Command 2, and it pushes the war to the Eastern Front in 1941-42. So looking at uh, Operation Barbarossa from the German invasion of the Soviet Union on June 22nd, 1941, until the eventual sort of halt of the Germans in front of Moscow uh, and the Soviet winter counteroffensives in 41-42. Uh, and that's where we're going, but we're not there yet. Uh, we've just started the campaign. Uh, in our last stream, we fought the first two initial battles, the initial crossing of the border and the drive on Riga with Army Group North, uh, the massive encirclement of over 200,000 Soviet troops and the seizure of Minsk uh, for Army Group Center's movement. And in today's stream, we're going to be starting off here with Herzgruppe Sud, which is the German invasion of the Ukraine with Army Group South. Um, this likely will be one of the more difficult scenarios or paths. Uh, you can see here the Red Army has chosen to concentrate its largest striking power south of the Pripyat Marshes. On paper, Army Group South will face some 3,700 Soviet tanks. In practice, the Red Army lacks the capability to keep these forces maintained and coordinated in action. Still, the German armies in this sector face the toughest task in Operation Barbarossa. So in Army Group Center, we had two tank groups with us uh, and one army group. In the south, we have one tank group with us and one army group. And so uh, this is a longer battle. It's 15 turns. The Germans faced a much stiffer task here historically. Uh, they did not make the same rapid progress in the south as they did in the north and, and more so in the center. Uh, and as a result, historically, it would lead to Hitler turning his panzers south to help with the seizure of Kiev and I think like around half a million soldiers there. Um, but not yet. This is the initial crossing of the borders, and so we'll see how that plays out in our game. We've got 15 turns, uh, and we're going to jump right in. Uh, by the way, Vicar, congratulations on your last day of undergrad classes. You know, P. Warner, of all the macro beers, it ain't that bad. Uh, I was given a key, Oxlorn. For what it's worth, I did pick, purchase War in the Pacific. Um, and I think I picked, purchased War in the West as well. I also bought Gary Grigsby's Bombing the Reich. I think this is the first Grigsby game I've probably been given for free. I bought War in the East 1. I didn't really play it a lot. All right, so here's Grupa Sud, OKH Dispatch. Intelligence reports a major Russian troop concentration in the Lvov area. Bypass this by striking directly east across the Bug River toward Rouen and Zidomor. Again, I'm really sorry for the pronunciation, here, guys. Uh, you can expect tank concentrations in this area, so it'll be vital to move supporting infantry up as quickly as possible to protect the supply lines to your spearheads. Okay, so we've got to take the objective of Zidomor by turn 9 to keep it on time, and Prosokoro by turn 10. We also need to hold the Premzel Crossing by turn 2, Dubno by turn 3, Rhone by turn 4, Lvov by turn 6, and the road to Kiev by turn 10. So you can see here, the Primzel crossing is right here, directly across from the river uh, that our troops will start on. We've got Lvov over here, um, just a little bit further to the east, uh, and just across the border as well. Uh, as we drive south, uh, you've got Proskuro, uh, near the south east southeastern portion of the map. And then we've also got other objectives at Dubno, Rhone, along this rail line. Uh, and then eventually Zidomir and the road to Kiev at the very extreme edge of this map. If we take a look at the map, we'll see we've got a concentration of armor sort of here in the center, but this is a little bit more confined of a map than the Minsk battle, which was much more wide open. So that's gonna lead to a more concentrated effort for us. It's gonna be harder, I think, for us to break through. The Minsk battle really did a good job of conveying the difficulty of supplying troops over long periods, and also you know, the striking power of armored formations driving deep into an enemy rear. We don't really have that as much here because we don't have the room to maneuver. 
We could try and cross this river up here at Chelm, drive east toward Corel, and then drive toward Look and Rhone from this rail line. Um, that might be a viable option. I have a hunch if we try and drive everybody up from the Premzel crossing and then east toward Low, Brody, and Dun Dun Dubno, uh, we'll run into a lot of resistance because there's really only one axis of advance here. Um, and so I think what we'll probably do is we'll try and break through at the Premzel crossing with infantry. We'll take these two armored units as well as infantry and drive directly on Lowo. Most of those troops will proceed toward Prosco, uh, while the other force up here north of the river, as well as these two armored units and a mechanized unit in reserve, will drive east and then they'll hit Rhone from the north and drive further east, linking up along this rail line with the troops who take Low, Brody, and Dubno, uh, sort of moving south to east. So that's my general strategy, I think. We'll see if it works. Um, meanwhile, our troops in this front also don't seem to have the same amount of artillery, so that's a little bit of a concern. Um, let's see here. We do have enough prestige to purchase some additional artillery for our, our breaching forces. So this infantry unit here, uh, the 101st Lichte German unit, is a veteran unit, but it doesn't actually have any artillery support. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase some artillery here. Uh, we have some engineers back here. Those will be useful in taking towns. I'm also going to go ahead and issue some artillery to... What do we want to give it to? One of these units. Well, they're both out of out of reach of our headquarters unit, so we can't do that. Where where is our damn headquarters unit? I'm guessing I can move it forward without or no I can't. The headquarters unit has to stay there for its points. Cause you can relocate depots. Cause that's what I'm gonna do for my depots. By the way, I've got three trucks, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove these depots. And then we're going to go ahead and we've, we've got five depots, so I guess I can push these a little bit closer. So we'll increase it to three. That'll support... Well, actually, we'll just do two here. That'll support our initial breakthrough. And then we're also going to put two depots up to the north here, since we are going to try and break through there. And then we've got two depots here, but I'm going to pull those back and then place these guys right on the border. Um, I think to that extent, I'm going to put place the third and final depot here. So we've got eight level supply here. That's a huge amount of supply there. Our other depots here, eight level right on the border. They should be able to cover a deep advance and eight over here should be able to cover a, a nice advance there. Um, apparently those guys are out of reach of the headquarters unit, so I'm not sure I can do a whole lot there. I do probably want to give some of my armored and mechanized troops a, a little bit of a bonus here. Maybe giving some of these guys some pioneers. I know it's incredibly expensive, but those those guys are going to need the support as they sort of break out. It's a little bit annoying that none of these guys are in range of anything. It's very expensive from a prestige perspective, though, to purchase stuff. So I want to be mindful of that. All right, we'll do that. That leaves us a hundred prestige that we can potentially carry over to the next battle. And uh, I think that's what we'll go with. So we'll go ahead and end the deployment phase here and we'll jump into the battle phase. All right, we have one tactical air. We've got another conference coming immediately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and Bump up some extra recon units here. Apparently that didn't give me more than the four here. I would have thought that would have given me seven. I do know if I get this tactical air here, I'll get two. So we'll use our tactical air. I don't know that I need my trucks right now, so we'll keep the, the opal trucks in the, in, in the bank, if you will. Uh, let's go ahead and immediately use our first tactical or precision bombing strike. Uh, over on the enemy supply depot to the north, primarily because these guys, all these troops along the southern border are going to be real close to supply lines because there's rail lines here. But these guys, the enemy troops on the border, probably won't have supplies if we get rid of this depot here. So go ahead and bomb that depot, which should cut these guys off from supply starting turn two, I'm guessing. 
So, yep, now that if we hit the B button, we can see what the enemy supply situation is. So by taking this depot here, everything to the west of this rail line is now without supply. So that should aid us after this initial turn. Okay, so we've got two tactical air units. I don't know that I want to use it against these guys who are in this town. Let's go ahead and do a breach attack. I did throw the city into ruins, which was not my plan. Crap. So we can try and... So we breached them. Move our armor forward here. Try to break out down the road. Zero to five, overrun. Nice attack there. Zero to two and a breach. And we drove them back there with that armor. We'll advance this infantry south. Hit these troops, which are not dug in. Continue to drive them south along this roadway. See heavy enemy armor formations here at Luo, directly in front of the town. So we'll probably get counterattacked by these two armored divisions here. This tank division has a specialist step of M 45 millimeter. I think these are anti-tank guns, so they won't aid the attack too much. The motorized division Likewise, although I don't, again, attacking our infantry in the open, they'll probably drive us back. Right. Let's use a feint against these guys to drop their support a little bit. I guess we'll just take the casualties. We did drive them back. Finish those guys off there, overrun them. Take some prisoners. And so we're through there. So we're through on this southern board this southern front. We've broken through. And we're near Luo, which we have to take by by turn six, that indicates to me the enemy's probably going to have considerable numbers of troops coming in. By the way, we do get some reinforcements by the looks of it. It looks like we get some Slovak infantry divisions, uh, three of them. We get an SS motorized division, and then we get four Hungarian units, which should help us. The Russians, meanwhile, get no reinforcements, which is kind of a, a, a difference from the previous battle. Narsa, so far, and I'm really early on, um, I enjoy this more than Blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg was a little bit too sloggy, and so far, this feels a little bit more... I don't know if freewheeling is the right term, but it feels a little bit more like it should, if that makes sense. All right, so that town's already turned into rubble, so let's go ahead and bomb this, just because I want to try and have some success attacking here. Before I decide what I'm going to do there, let's do this. Tank across the bridge. Yeah, lost the specialist step. Let's move these mechanized troops here. I need to breach here. So we did get across the river. Didn't do as much damage as I would have liked. But we did get across the river and established a, a bridgehead here in the north. Drove these border troops back, although we didn't destroy them. Let's get across here, attack there. Drove them back. Those guys in the open. Drive them back further. Now we're dealing with some enemy armor that's counterattacking us. Or potentially. 
So we've got the 41st tank division here. I'm gonna race these mechanized troops in here. My armored troops, I'm gonna swing some of these guys across as well as some mechanized troops here. So we're across the river here in the northern front at two points. We'll hold this front here. Some of these troops south. A little bit worried about what these guys, this cavalry might do. I think we'll hold these guys on the defensive here. I don't want, I don't need that third bridge right now. We'll see if they hold in position. I, I guess I could try and attack this cavalry here to do some damage to them. Maybe even swing around and take these prisoners here. Because again, they could try and advance west, but there's no rail line for them to cut if this cavalry breaks across my front. I don't think there's any way they can get to that supply depot. So if we advance like this, take those prisoners and attack these enemy troops, we can drive them back. You know what? And then we can drive this infantry south. We've uncovered another enemy infantry armored division with T-34. So this infantry formation here is gonna get hit hard. The enemy could cross the river at this bridge with their troops here to try and maybe threaten our flank, but I don't really think there's, that's the one glory about the lack of infrastructure here. There's no real, there's nothing really for them to take there. I'm gonna race the 16th Panzer Division south because I think we're gonna be needed here in front of Luo. Meanwhile, at the Premzel crossing, so we'll just attack these troops in the town. Hopefully we can drive them back. We did manage to do that. Attacked and overran. So we took Premzel itself, which was a secondary objective. Advance east and hit these troops here, do a little bit more damage to them. And these troops across to hold the crossing. Probably get counterattacked at Premzel, but we didn't have to take that till turn two. Right, we'll advance those guys this way. It's all good. I mean, I don't have any, I've got no restriction in sharing my thoughts. Uh, and so far, my thoughts are generally positive. Um, Blitzkrieg was enjoyable from like a gameplay perspective, but I didn't find it super, it didn't feel like it kind of got the, I don't know, it just didn't get, didn't get something right about those early campaigns. And I think at least my initial impression so far anyway, is that this game does. Meanwhile, I use my tactical air against this. We suppress this T-34 and these two infantry units. Hopefully they remain suppressed for the AI's turn. Let's take a look at the recon situation here. What do we have working against us? Doesn't look like they have anything west of Luck or Coel. So this seems like a pretty hollow front now that we've broken across here. I'm hoping we can really swing in, take these rail lines that drive south. All of my troops who have crossed so far should be in supply with the except... Uh, yeah, all of them should be in supply. Um, and that's good. Where are these reserves coming online in turn two? Can I see where they come? So these guys come here. The Slovakian divisions come at Rezo. At least one of them does. They both do. The Hungarian divisions actually come along the southern border, so that could be interesting. Potential strike at the at the enemy flank here. So that makes sense why they've got these troops on the border. But that's not until turn four, so that's a little ways away still. A 
Agreed, Narcissus. That was my main criticism. And and Minsk really in this particular game, Riga too, but Minsk especially really had a Blitzkrieg feel. Now, if this battle turns into a slog, I don't really have an issue with that because historically, from the little reading I've done, Army Group South really did deal with some some big challenges from a um, breaking through and mobility perspective. They really weren't able to. All right, let's move this headquarters unit into Chow. I don't want to like put this headquarters unit in the middle of a field. But like that's where they're going to end up, I think. I don't exactly know the rules for like how headquarters regain their stuff. I don't know if they have to remain on on good roads or not. Right, that should help. Von Rundstedt. All right. So I think that's it for this turn. Let's go ahead and move forward to turn number two. No, BV. The Blitzkrieg was a expansion, or the first DLC for Unity of Command 2 was called Blitzkrieg. And it focused on the 1939 and 1940 and a little bit of the 41 campaigns. Specifically, it focused on the invasions of Poland, the Low Countries, France, Norway, uh, the Balkans, and then potentially if you had some good results, you could invade England. All right, so these enemy troops here are cut off from supply, as we predicted based on our precision airstrike. Let's go ahead and we've got another precision airstrike to use. So let's use it, I guess, here. So this is the enemy supply situation. I don't know that this will actually hurt them very much because they're on a railway junction. It does look like it'll cut these armored units off of supply. All right. Okay. I don't want to do that. I can't bombard. It's my uh, Panzer Group One has regained all of its command points. My Group Sud regained five of eight. Problem is, I don't have any armor here in the south. Could swing these guys over to try and help, but I really need the armor against the Russians here. I'm gonna hit Lvov with air and hope. Well, it didn't, uh... No retreat, eh? Alright, we'll attack that guy. It says one to one. We actually didn't kill anyone, I don't think, but we did do considerable suppression damage. One to two. This is just a bloodbath. I'm taking a ton of casualties. Mainly because I think I have to. Zero to two overrun. I can go ahead and hit these guys also. So we destroyed two enemy units there. And so a whole bunch of infantry casualties up front. God, we took a lot of losses there. I really need to try and drive these tanks back so I can take this bridge. I don't think I did. We'll be able to get one side of it. I don't have the mechanized forces to break through here. I guess the bridge isn't as important because we did get across here. Let's 
Let's use our air power against this guy. It gives me an extra truck. Which I'll probably be able to use here. That was actually a pretty good result for us there. We drove it back and only suffered a little bit of suppression damage. Taking these three prisoners down here would have been nice, though. So this bridge is for sure going to be destroyed in front of Drohobix. The good thing is we've got an army group down here, so we should be able to repair the bridge right away. We've got enough congestion with the enemy infantry around here that we're probably not going to really have a chance at breaking through this turn anyway. Meanwhile, in the north... Didn't I don't think there's enemy troops down here. Again, I only get one to one. It's not even with the armor, we're getting one to one on our attack. Probably gonna destroy the bridge at luck before I can get there. Jesus Christ, I didn't realize I advanced with all that stuff behind me. Well, the good news is I uncovered it before they completely cut me off and shredded me. Is I didn't really it didn't hurt them all that much. All right, let's bring these guys up here. Get a zero to two on this armored formation. Drive it back. Bring our infantry up here and finish them off. Destroying the enemy armor is 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 key in my book. So they do have an armored unit here on the eastern side of the river near Look. They'll probably destroy the bridge in front of Look. They also have a motorized division, which could do some havoc here um, to our to our west of our lead elements. But I think we might be okay with that. We've got quite a bit of armor and mechanized troops here to face them. These guys will all be cut off for two turns, so they'll probably be even further weakened. They can advance toward my supply there. Swing this armor north. What's our supply situation going to look like? These lead elements are going to be out of supply. Where can we throw a depot that it won't not or it won't have support? I think a depot here will be safe, but that won't even make a difference. That won't really either. I suppose we could throw a depot here to support the drive. And then eventually, assuming there's nothing to the east of Koa, I should have double checked that. No, there's nothing over here is that I can tell. Um... I want to attack these guys. I'll just let them starve for another turn. And I'll get these mechanized troops south, because I think there's a lot of enemy armor down this way. 
Also, we captured the bridge near Primsel intact because we took it turn one. So that'll support our drive east along these railways. Again, they'll probably destroy the bridge over here. But as long as uh, they don't destroy these bridges here, we should be able to keep using the, the railways. We do have some new troops that we can deploy now also. So we've got a new mechanized division here that we can immediately place at the spearhead of our drive here in the east. And then we've also got a Slovakian infantry division in the south. They both come in there, so we'll, we'll wait to do all of our attacking down there. I think I kind of already did. Let's so move that in there. Get this other division here. These are green troops, so they're not as effective, but they can still be useful. In holding supply lines in our flank. That would always work, right? We have to take Dunabo by turn three. I mean, maybe we'll have a chance to take it next turn, depending on what happens here. We've got a pretty good armored spearhead here. We could try and drive for it. They have troops there right now? No, it doesn't look like they do. So they could pull troops north, but I, I think we might actually have a chance to take this objective by turn three. All right, let's see what the uh, Soviets do on their second turn. All right, so they're gonna immediately attack by infantry there. They did drive it back, but they didn't overrun it, so they only get the one attack. Looks like their armory in the south is pulling east, so they may be pulling back to defend Donovo, which could prevent us from easily taking it. I don't have any more recon to see what the enemy has there. Um, all right, so they moved some mechanomite. Oh God, they did move troops in front of us. All right, so let's do this. Let's bomb these guys first. Zero to two. Um, yeah, we're not getting there. They moved all of their armor east there, didn't they? Where's a depot I can destroy? What are they feeding their troops with? Hmm. All right, we finished off that division. this armor here. Just maybe we can force our way across the river here and race in and take the objective. I don't get why you lose movement points because there's a unit you didn't see. So this guy can move adjacent to Dunaboda, but he can't take it, huh? Even if I if I up it because there's units on each flank. Damn it. We're not gonna get it. Alright. Let's look elsewhere for the moment. They didn't destroy this bridge, which is, again, very interesting. All right, we'll attack this guy from the rear, get the overrun so we can attack him twice, get the overrun so we can attack him a third time, and basically without loss, wipe that division out. Advance this way. Use these green Slovakian troops here to get the overrun on those guys. They get a free attack and a kill. So we took Sturger Lee, or however you pronounce that. I'm going to switch my armor down here so we can race across and take this bridge. 
We're getting in behind all their border troops here, too. So we've gotten across this river, which isn't really going anywhere, but does get us toward our general objective heading that direction. Zero to four, zero to five in a breach. I do want to try and, well, there's so many troops down here. those prisoners I don't think we'll try and cross the river there okay so we're fully through I think in the southern portion of the map I think the challenge at this point, I mean, really, it's, I don't, I, I don't, I really want Dunbo, Dubno, but I don't think I can get there. These guys can get adjacent, but they can't freaking get there. Yes, the 16 ID can get there. Hell yeah. We took the town and on time. We were able to push this one division, the 10th Soviet tank division back and expand the breach and take the objective on time. It's a secondary objective, so it's not, you know, the greatest accomplishment, but it's still an accomplishment. You know, what's the supply situation? So all of these guys here in this big pocket are gonna be out of supply next turn. We've cut the rail line moving west. So that cuts all the supply down here. They're either gonna to have to fall back toward this rail line or they're gonna to have to try and break through our armored spearhead to the east. Um, I'd rather take some infantry casualties here trying to break up some of their, their striking power here. Mostly just to weaken them. so that they can't effectively counterattack me there. Uh, oops, I didn't want to do that. I should have moved into luck. Now they're just going to drive across that bridge and cut me off. Um, oops. Crap, I should have moved these guys here. Can't move anything else that way. Well, they're gonna cut my Armored Spearhead off. That'll be fine one turn. So, what's our supply situation look like now? Our lead elements are gonna be out of supply. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna pull this tr these trucks back. That'll get me two trucks to deploy further east, probably building up this existing depot here, which should support my drive east. Once I link the rail line between Brody and Dubno, we'll be back in supply anyway. And so far my advance in the south is following the rail line, so we're okay there. This is turn three, so we get one more Slovakian division here. It's actually a mechanized Slovakian or motorized Slovakian division. So they're going to be a bit better. We'll race them south here to take these, these prisoners here. 
All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up right here. We're at the end of this turn, and we're about halfway through this particular battle in terms of playtime. Uh, we've broken through on the front line. We're racing south and cutting off troops along the border. We're starting to get some of our Slovakian reinforcements coming online. And overall, the initial attack in the Ukraine is going reasonably well. So we'll see how that continues in our next video. Uh, this DLC for Unity of Command 2 is uh, Unity of Command 2 Barbarossa, and it comes out tomorrow, actually, on April 21st. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave your thoughts down below, and I'll catch you guys next time. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'm out.